What's up, our maiden? You are watching the barn rebuild. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be jumping up on the roof. We've got to sort some stuff out for the um, roof windows. Not V Lux, key light. Half hour left of daylight today, but I'm going to do a bit of angle grinding for the um, metal trusses. So these are the purlins, and one goes across the V Lux. I don't know about you, but I've never seen anyone. On the internet whatsoever youtube on google or anything actually cut out for the roof windows with like displays have you ever seen anyone do that because i was trying to figure out how to do it and it just seems almost impossible what i've done is i've got the carpenters to space them out further so they've got displays but not directly horizontal and vertical just a bit wider i'm going to do that on my cart lodge but i still need to figure out how to do it on here it's a little bit easier because we've got big chunky counter buttons to take the roof in so the winds are actually going to sit on that i'll turn you around i'll show you okay so that's the opening so we're going to have a twin one so one there and one there and you can see obviously this purling cuts straight across the middle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to chop it out and then re-weld it over here on that side so the angle grinder is going to be going that's the job today just to cut it out and kind of get it ready and everything tomorrow i'm going to weld it into place so this is what i was talking about in terms of display so the roof window here on the bottom like that's essentially where 90 percent of carpenters put their trimmers so it'll be like there and then the roof window light sits on here now i've told them to space it 150 at the bottom so basically i get a splay that comes down here if the pencil is sharp like that and then at the top it's only 100 normally you do it so it's uh vertical here and then horizontal at the top but because my pitch is like only just about 18 degrees it just felt weird to do it that way so i think what i'm going to have to do is instead of the felt being cut back right to here i'm going to have to put something here so it doesn't get cut back as much but so we can still get the splays on it difficulty is i haven't got the windows on site so i don't know exactly how they're going to sit or anything like that this is complete guessing it's annoying and it's like that I, I like to work out things beforehand but i can't because no one's actually ever shown how they do the correct splays ever even the manufacturers if anyone's if anyone knows how to do it i probably would have done it by the time you find the information but i'm sure it'd be useful for anyone that finds it i'm going to do it in a kind of like problem solving manner mm. let's get this cut out Pack this into place and now I can take that wood off and weld it properly. I am not a professional welder in any way, shape, or form. This is a gasless welder, and I better do a good job of it, otherwise, 
This might be falling down on someone's head later. It holds me, so there's no way that's going to come down, is it? I was, I was hoping to show you some decent welds. Uh, I'll show you how rubbish I am. See, with a gasless welder, you get loads of spatter and uh, loads of slag. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get a grinder on it. You know what they say, the, a grinder and paint make the welder that I ain't. Jobs are good in. I've whacked some uh, red oxide paint on the welds and everything, and then uh, that's pretty much, I like that. I think I've done well. Mm. The carpenters went home early. Uh, it was raining for about an hour, and I think he just had enough, and then, then he went off. But um, he wasn't too happy about me pulling him in the morning about them things if you watched last episode you'd see and then um so yeah uh, i don't know where he, when he's coming back and everything because he said he'd, he'd have to speak to sean because he's not sure when when he's when he can come back and i should just get the roofers in um he's only got a little bit more of fascia and soffit to do mm. Right, good. so I'm going to sort out what's happening with these V-luxes. Um, I'm not sure, quite sure why it's my job to do this, really. But <laughs> uh, makes you wonder why you pay people a load of money and you end up doing stuff yourself, kind of thing. Right, so there's going to be 25 mil batten sitting on there and then 50 mil on top and then this is where my corrugated cement is going to sit on top of there so because these counter battens are so chunky that's what the windows are going to sit on now what i'm thinking is because the bracket's going to be about here so i'm gonna if i screw this in here this is a four by two then basically that splay from that corner down to there and then this 4 2 doesn't interfere so it should work so that's what I'm going to do so uh, it was supposed to be 100 mil at the top and 150 at the bottom but they've done it wrong they've done 150 at the top 150 at the bottom it's all right I don't mind in here um, because I want the light to kick through to the other side of the kitchen anyway um, over the other side it's different so I'm gonna have a 3 by 2 and a 4 by 2 either end basically uh, I've got some big bolt things that I'm gonna whack through here 
this is just to basically get the felt to come out further and then uh, the flashing will obviously sort out the rest I didn't know whether the 150 splays is going to be too harsh if you was doing this one horizontal I mean it would end up no, halfway in the ridge kind of thing it wouldn't work over on the cart lodge when I do them I'm going to do them slightly differently I reckon but you can check that out when I do it so I was going to drill it and then put some bolts in but then my battery gave up so I thought I'd wang a load of nails in instead but that's solid it's not going anywhere so bearing in mind that's not actually taking anything but the flashing basically and a bit of felt so that's going to be the splay like that so I'm just going to sort these out and then I'll catch up with you uh, in a few days time because the roofer is coming to felt and batten and uh, I, th I think, I'm not sure he's going to fit the actual roof windows because Sean hasn't actually got anyone that's going to do it yet. He did say to me, oh, I thought you was doing it. I was like, no, like, it's your job, mate. <laughs> Why am I doing so much the bloody things? I, it's not as if like, I turned around and went, well, actually, you need to knock five grand off because I've done so much and everything. It's just like... I'll catch you in a few days and then we'll see whether this works out later on. Bit stressed at the moment, a bit pissed off as well actually. Um, come over this side to see these V-Luxes. This one's too small, by at least 5mm. The windows are 780 wide um, and that is like 775 so there's like no tolerance whatsoever minus tolerance and then this one here is 780 wide bang on so no tolerance whatsoever so that better be bloody square I've, I've texted the carpenter I've sent him a picture and I said the roofers can't come until this is fixed I, I can do it I can do it but it's a fucking pain in the ass for me to do it and I've paid money for it to be done properly I don't want to come and fucking undo people's work if they haven't done it properly why would you not give it more tolerance in the first place I, I should have said something in the first place I should have said no don't do them at 790 you do them wider 10 mil each so we might have got away with it that's so bloody tight <sighs> Jesus Christ, I'll let you know what happens tomorrow. The carpenters finished up yesterday. <clears throat> I'll, I'll show you what's happened. The brick blowers, they forgot this as well. So I'll put that in. I said to him, I messaged him and said, look, don't worry, I'll do your job for you. <laughs> I can't get around that way. I'll I'm going to walk all the way around. Hang on. Okay, so it's been fixed. Now, what had happened was this rafter here, doubled up rafter. Um, I don't know who done these noggins, but the noggins were done first, which this one was too wide. So it bowed this one this way. And then when Jay come to put these trimmers in, he just measured the gap and just done it but didn't realise that obviously it was too small at that point. So here's a lesson. Put your trimmers in before you put noggins in. What they've done is just, they've just wedged in. Basically they cut this one out. I said, you need to cut that one out and basically sort this out. I, I would have personally cut a new trimmer, but they've just packed out the end. So I made them put a load of nails in. Should be fine now. I made a little bit of a miscalculation. So my roof has come. It's all down there. My barge boards, they go wrap over, but I hadn't anticipated for the extra batten. 
so what's going to end up this was meant to be covered but it's now it's not now because the roof's going to be built up so much now i know the exact measurement on the corrugated stuff it's going to come down to about here so about 35 mil is going to show at the bottom so i've just went and got some more timber and i'm going to paint it up and i'll put that on on tuesday because dan's popping over and we'll whack this on because i think the roof coverings being put on on Wednesday now um, Sean's got a proper bloke that's gonna do it that does it normally so that should work out a lot better and these stupid diagonal things I emailed my structure engineer in the end I said look are these absolutely necessary because the building inspector and the carpenter said well, it's weird that you're having them because it's a cut roof and you only normally have them on a truss roof so I emailed him and I said, look, do I actually need these or not? So I said, it's going to interfere with the insulation on the inside. So he said, well, maybe you can put them on top or maybe you can basically use builder straps. So I said, yeah, they could go on top, but I'm going to have to pay someone to do that because the roof is coming on Monday and it's going to extra cost. So I want to do something that I can do. So I'm going to do the building straps. They're going to go on the inside and I need to crisscross them as, across, ideally at a 45 degree angle, basically. So I'm going to rip these down and get rid of them. I'm going to get them a few bits done now. It's Friday night. I've got like maybe an hour just to faff a little bit. And then tomorrow I'm going to do some volunteering, going home for a couple of days, and then I'll be back on next week, Monday. Roof is felting and battening. And he's fitting the V-Luxes as well, or key lights. So we'll be able to see whether them splays were correct or not. See how it works out. Catch you soon. What's up? I'm just editing this and I realised that I'm missing footage so I'm quickly going to explain something. I was going to do it scrolly, read on the screen, but it might be a bit too long. So, what had happened up to this point, the roof windows had been in the uh, Builders Merchants for a good like three or four weeks, but they wasn't actually on site. So, I started chasing them to say, right, they need to be on site because obviously the roofing was going in and the roof was there. Allegedly, my main contractor was chasing them at the same time. Now, it took probably a week until they actually got on site. They got there very late. And then when it comes to this roofer actually fitting them, he then checked the flashing kits and they was all wrong. All wrong, right? So my, my roofing is corrugated. Yeah, big six, so like that thick, and the flashings came for slate tiles. Like, are they morons or what? So they was all wrong. So I phoned up my main contractor and said, look, all these fla all these flashings are wrong. This bloke's fitting them now, and he's not going to be able to do them unless they're the right ones. So he didn't want to deal with it. He then told me to then phone the sales rep to try and sort it out. And then the sales rep didn't necessarily want to change them straight away. He wanted to speak to the other roofer that was fitting the actual corrugated stuff to check what flashings they need. Even though I was telling him which ones we needed. Obviously, Sean, my, my main contractor, no clue whatsoever about anything 
other than ground working, when it comes to this, he was standing there like a, 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 a moron, basically. The other geezer that was fitting the actual corrugate stuff, he didn't give a fuck. He didn't care what went on there. And the sales rep standing there going, well, Aiden said he thinks that we need this one. And I, I was standing there going, yes, that's the one that we need. Like, I just didn't really, like, I just can't understand it. Anyway, so he then had to go and change all of them. And then we come back to now... This is the rest of the footage. So if you notice, there's no flashing on this one. And the reason why is because the wrong flashing was ordered in the first place. It was for the slate. Obviously, slate was the wrong one. And he changed the other ones and then was convinced that this was the right one. So I phoned him out and I said, look, the twin one is still wrong. Why haven't you changed this? And he was like, no, it's the right one. It's the right one. And I said, no, it's not. It can't be used. And he said, right, I'll phone Keylight and check with them. He's phoned them and he said, he's phoned back. And he said, yeah, they said it was the right one. And I said, it's not the right one. He said, well, do you want to speak to them? So I said, yeah, I'll speak to them. Give, give me their number. I phoned them up, explained what the situation was. And they said, yeah, you got the wrong one. You need the other one. Gave me the code for it. And then I phoned him up and I said, look, they've told me it's the wrong one. This is the one that we need. And then he's claiming that that's the one that he ordered and they've given him the wrong one. I don't think that that's the case. He's always excuses, excuses, excuses. It's always convenient. Always me sorting shit out when I'm paying a main contractor to do this. And now my main contractor is basically prepping me up to bump up the price because he's getting someone to put this roof sheeting on this weekend so literally three days notice to get it on when he knew from the very start that's the roofing that i was getting and the roofing sheets were actually ordered five weeks ago so plenty of time to obviously squeeze someone in they're obviously bumping up the price because they're doing it on the weekend and they're going to get a gang of lads in god knows how that's going to turn out so here we are i think that this has turned out quite successful though um I felt sorry for the blokes that were here today fitting this and everything. He'd had enough by the end of the day. I can understand that, but he's he's hopefully he's done a good and he's done a real right job. He understood exactly what I meant about the splays and what I wanted. And lucky enough, obviously, like these are sitting on the battens up. So let me show you. The plasterboard's going to sit in here. So what that ends up looking like eventually. Obviously, I'll need to pack out that whole thing. But that is going to sit like that. So it's been splayed and it looks like that's worked out. So I know exactly what I'm going to do with the V-Luxes on my cart lodge. It's not going to be quite the same because of the additional battening on here and that where it sits and everything. And the windows over there and that, they're like massive. You might notice there's a big cross here. That's that um, bracing. Basically, I ripped off the other stuff. I spoke to my structure engineer, and he said that I could do that. So I, well, I done it, even though it's not really my job. I do loads of stuff that's not really my job. And uh, yeah, I'm get, getting a little bit narked by it. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.